So we've played about five games since the last time we met, and to be honest with you, <laughs> there's been some very, very dodgy results in there. So following on from our last game was an away from home game against Liverpool, and as you can see, we actually got pretty dominated in the game. Liverpool went 2-0 up through Wijnaldum and Sadio Mane, but Edinson Cavani got two goals for us. Uh, one in the 22nd minute and then just after half time to level things up. And we got ourselves an impressive point. Next up was a 6 0 away win against Portfield in the League Cup. Daniel James, Mason Greenwood with a brace, a hat trick even. Scott McTominay and Nemanja Matic. We then absolutely thumped Sheffield United at home in the Premier League 6 1. Billy Sharp had put them in front five minutes in. But Kingsley Coleman, Greenwood, Maguire, Martial, an own goal, and another Martial goal sealed the three points. We then needed to go to penalties to beat Portsmouth. Aye, to beat Portsmouth. It was 0-0 in regulation time. Uh, expected goals here, 1.5, 0.39, so our strikers letting us down. But we did end up uh, succeeding after the penalty shootout. We then went away from home against Burnley. And again, our attacking issues are persistent. We we'll smashed Sheffield United 6-1. And ever since then, the goals have well and truly dry dried up. And 0-0 in this one. And finally, was a one all draw away from home against Southampton. Josh Madger, a former Sunderland man, getting the first goal of the game in the 40th minute. And it took till the 81st for us to get our equaliser through Marcus Rashford. So whilst you've been aware, our Champions League group stage draw has been done. And we've got Juventus in our group. Not ideal at all. Krasnodar and Midland complete this four teams. So we're going to qualify. We've got to qualify. Obviously, Juventus are our main competition. They are likely to be the team who finish at top of the group, I would imagine. I'm not particularly happy with our, our tactics comp doing at the moment. I've made some changes. We've got our first game today up against FC Midland in the Champions League. We'll then play Wolves after that in the Premier League. So let's get into the Midland game. So we've got pretty much a full strength squad. David De in goal, Wamba Saka, Philippe Bia. Maguire and Tellez in the defence. Bruno Fernandes, Rodrigo Benancourt and Paul Pogba in the midfield with Kingsley Coleman, Marcus Rashford and Edinson Cavani leading the line. Uh, it was a toss-up between Martial and Cavani. They both had good games, but I'm going to give Cavani the nod today as Martial started the last game. So the Champions League is a pretty big priority for us. We want to get as deep into the competition as is humanly possible for our squad. Uh, I want to be competing in both the European and the domestic honours, to be honest with you. I think we've got the personnel for it. It's just finding the right system to really make it tick. First highlight of the game comes 20 minutes in. It's our free kick in their half, so we're in possession. Pogba picks up in the centre, tries to find Kingsley Corman through the middle, but is unable to do so. Thankfully, we win the ball back. Fernandez through to Mar uh, Martial. It's Marcus Rashford. At the back post, that puts us 1-0 up. Only his second goal of the season. He's been a little bit disappointed, so maybe Martial starts on the left-hand side if he doesn't pick up his form. But if it continues like he's doing in this game, everything should be absolutely fine. An absolutely superb ball by Bruno Fernandes. The kind of ball I want to see him doing more. And Marcus Rashford tucks it away nicely. I feel like this expected goal malarkey is a double-edged sword. It looks quite good. When your expected goals are massively over the uh, over the top compared to your opponent, but uh, it sort of does add another reflection period on the game to be able to see how you're actually performing as compared to your opponent and your goals as Midland go close. As uh, Pione Sisto went back to Midland in real life, I, th I can't remember that happening, but uh, remember him? He used to be absolutely fantastic a couple of years ago. As Corman gets the ball on the byline and oh, Pogba. Paul Pogba should be burying that. Three minutes to go before half time. We have ourselves another highlight, and it's Midland driving forward with Pione Sisto. And that is dreadful. And that's the end of the first half. Not a particularly open attacking game, but we have got ourselves in front. So I think we are going to go from off from an attacking team mentality, something a little bit more positive. Look to increase our possession, just retain the ball, and force Midland to make the changes. And we have ourselves another highlight. Benton Core pinches the ball in the midfield. Edinson Cavani is there. Edinson Cavani gets his third goal of the season to put us 2-0 up. Am I justified in starting them over Anthony Martial? Maybe, maybe not. But as you can see, Benton Core picks up a sloppy ball from the Midland defence. Kingsley Coleman into Cavani. And it is a tidy finish from the 18-yard line. We are going to look to make some changes. We need to try and keep our squad 
as fit as we possibly can. There's a hell of a lot of games coming up. We're going to take off Paul Pogba for Donny van den Beek. And we're also going to bring on Scott McTominay for Benton Kerr in the centre of the park. Get both of our centre midfielders off. Keep them fresh. And uh, the likes of van den Beek and stuff, I want to give as much game time to anyway. So I'm more than happy to make them changes. As Cavani is in again. Kingsley Coleman turn and provider once again. And we find ourselves 3-0 up 65 minutes in. Much much better performance so far from the boys. I had tinkered with a couple of things going into this game. Um, I'd put Paul Pogba on a, as a deep line paper on support duty rather than defend, hoping to get him a little bit more involved in the play and uh, changed a couple of the roles on the wings as well, which seems to have provided fruitful considering they've been involved in every goal. Another highlight now, Luis Felipe, who was Ramos, by the way, when he's uh, in game. Is, uh, picks up the ball, Coleman goes for goal, and it is not a good shot. The highlight isn't over, though, so there probably is another chance coming, hopefully, for us. Kingsley Coleman beats his man. He's in on net. Should do better with that good save by Hansen. Corner for us, Bruno Fernandes to take it. Uh, I mean, some things haven't changed from FM20. 81 minutes in, not long to go now. I'll look to make our third and final sub after this highlight. Kingsley Coleman's chasing down Paulinho. On their left-hand side. They keep the ball well though between the defensive midfield. And he's in behind fours. And that is a phenomenal save by David De Gea. Uh, 6.9 average. Uh, it's jumped 7.2 after that save. If you haven't noticed by the way in FM21. Goalkeeper ratings are much more changed. That actually reflect how a goalkeeper's playing. Rather than if they're assisted or something. Five minutes to go. Haven't made me sub. Scott McTominay is picking up the ball in the midfield. Playing it back to Harry Maguire. They're playing pretty deep, uh, a deep line, so we've got plenty of space to be able to knock on about as Marcus Rashford picks it up on this left-hand side. Finds Bruno Fernandes, who hits the post. So we will make our final substitute of the game. Uh, we'll take off Marcus Rashford for Anthony Martial, give him some game time. And time has ticked away, and that is the full-time whistle. FC Midland nil, Manchester United 3 Expected goals of 1.85 versus 0.58 is a decent enough result. Rashford and Cavani on the nets for us. We'll take that. Let's move on to the Premier League game. Is it against Wolves? It is against Wolves. So here we are for the game against Wolves. We're playing pretty much an unchanged side. The only change is Marcus Rashford comes off. Anthony Martial is going to start on that left-hand side. So Wolves playing their traditionally decent goal to start with. That's the corner tactic, by the way. Front post. Easy as you like. Best corner taker. Best header. Get them attacking the front post. But yeah, they're playing their traditional 5-3-2 uh, or whatever it is. Uh, formation that Wolves like to play. I thought it might be difficult to break down. But obviously set pieces. The formation doesn't really matter at that point. But we get ourselves another highlight. Four minutes in. Alex Tellez bombing down that left-hand side. Bruno Fernandes goes for goal. It is a great strike. But once again, he hits the post for the second game running. 10 minutes in, we have a throw in deep within the Wolves' half. Pogba finds Benton Kerr back to Wambasaka. Not the guy you really want to be attacking down that right-hand side, but needs must at the moment. Bruno Fernandes, lovely little through ball for Kingsley Coleman. And uh, his finishing's been a little bit off, has Coleman. He's got a good few assists in his time since he's uh, joined the club. But I need some more finished product from him. Pogba with a lovely little switch of play to Anthony Martial. On this left-hand side, he dances into the box. It hits Edison Gavani and comes back to him. And Anthony Martial gets his third goal of the season. Playing on that left-hand side, usually occupied by Marcus Rashford. And um, I'm glad I left out Rashford for today's game. Just to rest his legs. Not necessarily making massive, massive changes here. It didn't hit off Cavani, hit off the defender. But 2-0, uh, 20 minutes in against a decent Wolves side. We'll, we'll take that after our last couple of Premier League results. This game is highlight filled as Paul Pogba switches the player to Kingsley Coleman. Pogba's passing, by the way, is absolutely beautiful as we get ourselves a penalty. Marcel brings down Kingsley Coleman in the box. And uh, whenever you're ready, VAR, you just check that penalty and let me know what you think. Uh, penalty has been awarded. Who is it that's stepping up? I can't even see. It is going to be Bruno Fernandes to step up to take it. And he buries it. To his right hand side. His second goal of the season. They've both been penalties interestingly. I'm um, hoping to see some more from him from open play. But he's turn provider for the corner. And converter for the penalty. 3-0. Another corner now. Bruno Fernandes. We get it again. Anthony Martial's the one lurking at that front post. And he gets his fourth goal of the season. Our third set piece goal in today's game. 
and it is important get them set up just any don't just leave them default otherwise they'll be absolutely crap get them set up as, as simple as you like front post back post just do something and you will definitely see better results than default as wolves go close only uh, only one minute of normal time to go in this first half benton Kerr slips it through to Cavani, and edinson Cavani beats the offside trap and gets his fifth goal of the season uh, i'm in a bit of a dilemma with our front three Cavani is producing the goods he's obviously going to only going to stay here for a year. I don't think I'm, I will offer him a new contract, despite his good run of form. Um, should I start sacrificing him for Martial and Rashford, or should I just play what I think's the best for this season? I'm not too sure yet. We'll have to wait and see that. But Man United, how is this happening? Five goals, and we've conceded one there. Reese Nelson with a tidy finish. Five goals in this game. We couldn't even get scrape one against Burnley. It uh, this game just seems a little bit topsy-turvy but I suppose that happens in real life and it happened on FM20 as well so we've had a little bit of a warning shot by Wolves there it's highly unlikely that they're going to get another four goals in the second half but just in case we are going to go off our attack and team mentality move to something a little bit more conservative in the positive one and see how the rest of this second half plays out Ruben Neves and Joao Moutinho are combining in the center of the park and that's a lovely little ball over the top for Raul Jimenez as a result of our high line Again, we're going to take that as a warning sign. We're going to drop our line just a bit, not too much. I don't want to go crazy and start panicking. But Raul Jimenez's second goal of the season gets Wolves just a little bit closer to getting into this game. Bruno Fernandez with a free kick. He's already provided two. Almost another. Edinson Cavani nods it to the back post and it goes out for a corner. It'll be Alex Tellers, the man to take it. He whips it in. Harry Maguire's there. It goes close. Oh, Adama Traoria picks up a loose ball in the midfield. He runs into goal. That, that's all right. As long as he doesn't score, I don't mind. So with only 25 minutes left on the clock, we'll look to make some changes. Let's see who's struggling the most. Bruno Fernandes. I will take him off. We'll get Donny van den Beek on for him. I want to get Marcus Rashford on for someone. Uh, we'll keep Anthony Martial on. We'll bring on Marcus Rashford for Cavani and switch the two. So Rashford out on the left. Anthony Martial leading the line. Let's see if Marsh Rashford can get himself a goal and get himself back in the contention for the start for next game. Although Kingsley Corman isn't having the greatest game either, but Mason Greenwood's currently injured, so I can't uh, bring him on. Only a few minutes left. The highlights now seem to have dried up. We'll bring on Scott McTominay for um, Benton Kerr in the centre of the, of the park. And there we have it, boys. Second half was a bit dull, but Manchester United 5, Wolves 2. A high scoring game, 3.18 expected goals for us, 1.88 for them, so they massively improved in the second half, but it wasn't enough. Our first half performance done the job. And here we are. This was a game we were obviously catching up on, so not many results coming in, but we now sit in fourth, having played the same number of games as Chelsea, Man City, Liverpool, who are above us. We're still undefeated, which is nice, but three draws, I think, and three wins. Would I have taken that? I probably wouldn't have. I probably would have expected more from our first uh, six games. Maybe a defeat in there by Liverpool, I would have expected, but wins against Burnley and Southampton, probably would have expected that. So, ups and downs to the start of the season. In terms of our next game, I know we've got Juventus coming up next, and I've got to play Juventus on a live comp, so it will be Juventus and West Ham, Champions League and Premier League, and then we'll probably round out with something like Krasnodar and Man City. So we've played all of the European teams in live comms or although it's not necessarily the uh, main goal of this series where was the board expected to reach the first knockout round so getting our first win getting a couple of more wins will be very very good as you can see we've got some criticisms now the nil nil draw against Burnley and the 1-1 draw against Southampton they don't seem to have an issue with the penalty win against Portsmouth which I was more uh, concerned about in terms of our club culture we're not doing too well either Signing players under the age of 22 for the future, I didn't really do. I think we needed sort of concrete our first 11 before we started looking at that sort of thing. High reputation players. Kingsley Coleman's pretty high reputation, you know what I mean? Uh, and there's Benton, Kerr, so they can sort off with that and sign English players. Hands up. I didn't even look. But anyway, lads, it's been an interesting start of the season. A lot of things learned about FM21. Uh, I think I'm starting to find me groove in terms of tactics and formation with Manchester United. But we'll wait and see how that continues in the next episode. There's only a couple of games to go between now and the next Krasnodar and Everton. But uh, 
it'll be interesting so i hope to see you there if you are enjoying my content lads please do me a favor and like the video it makes a massive massive difference um, I'm hoping to push towards the 1,000 subscriber mark as well this year. So if you're interested in getting subscribed, I know a lot of you are not subscribed to watch something like 90% of 10 at the currently um, unsubscribed versus subscribed. So if you could do that for me, that would be fantastic. But anyway, lads, until next time, take it easy.